Hello all kiddies, I'm Chris from Techspert and today I'm reviewing the almighty Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra. Certainly not inspired by any other smartwatches out there. And if you're tempted by one, I hope you're feeling pretty plush because it costs a not insubstantial 599 British quids. Oof! But is it actually worth selling your least kidney for? Well, I've had it strapped to my arm for the best part of two weeks now. So here's my full Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Let's start with design. I'm going to basically state the obvious here. The Galaxy Watch Ultra ain't exactly what you would call compact. Comes in precisely one size, f***ing enormous, or 47 mils if you want to be all technical about it. And on my twig-like appendage especially, it looks rather massive, more like it belongs on the arm of a bloody brontosaurus or something. You probably won't be too shocked to learn it's got a bit of a heft to it as well, but I've had it on there for the best part of a fortnight now, so I'm pretty much used to it. It's not really a problem. And despite that circular screen, Samsung has gone with a squircle frame, which does add to the overall bulk and certainly doesn't help those Apple Watch comparisons, even if it does actually more closely resemble some Samsung smartwatches of yesteryear. You've got yourself a choice of grey, white or silver colours for that frame. And as you can see, the default wristband for this here grey model is this beautifully bright tango orange effort. Aye, it appears to have been rather shamelessly cribbed, but I love it because it's the same bright orange as the Andean cock of the rock. One of my absolute favourite top 10 birds ever because of its hilarious name and the fact that it looks like an absolute head case. And you certainly can't accuse the Galaxy Watch Ultra of being soft because that chassis is constructed from grade 4 titanium. You've got sapphire glass on there as you'd expect at this sort of price point. So even after a full two weeks of my general cack handedness accidentally smacking it off various walls and desks and tables and family members, it's still looking absolutely box fresh. In fact, the Watch Ultra has passed various military standard 8-10H tests, including extreme humidity, extreme vibrations, just as well I do tend to vibrate a lot, can survive extreme temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees, so you're basically set for springtime in Sunderland, and apparently can go as high as 55 degrees. I'm pretty sure I would die before the watch if it got anywhere near as hot as that. So I don't confuse our American chums, that's in centigrade, not Fahrenheit. In Fahrenheit it's, uh, oh f*** knows, that's what Google's for I guess. And it's also IP68, water and dust resistant, and it can survive pressures of up to 10 atmospheres, so good for a bit of scuba diving, skinny dipping, whatever. As for that strap, well, it has to be said, it's almost as chunky as the actual watch, but I find it comfortable enough to wear for 24 hours a day. Fine for wearing during exercises as well, particularly when you're getting super, super sweaty because it's a silicon style finish. And Samsung has implemented a new dynamic lug system for whipping the straps off, which is easy enough if you've actually got fingernails and you haven't chewed them to bollocks like I have. Otherwise, top geek tip, keep one of these sim tray pokey pin things handy and you're basically golden. Have at you! Of course, this new system does mean you're limited in what other straps you can slap on there to basically other ones that Samsung has produced for it. And these things are in particularly cheap if you look on the website. Now, that display maxes out at 3000 nits, which is absolutely blind and pretty much literally. I had absolutely no trouble seeing it when I was out in Milan with so much sun that I basically melted like a slab of lard in a frying pan. The auto brightness is pretty decent, certainly jacks it right up when you do go outdoors, although I have found that it can still be a little bit on the bright side, certainly when I'm just sat in my living room in the dark in the evenings, just having a wee cry to myself on the sofa. But Samsung has added in a night mode watch face, which turns red and black at night so the screen doesn't startle you. This only seems to actually work on the ultra specific watch faces, you've got a small selection stuffed on there. It does seem to take a wee while to kick in as well. You can be sat in the dark for literally about 10 minutes, 20 minutes before it finally activates. But it certainly is much easier on the eyes. Good for those old night hikes or whatever you're into. In my case, staggering in what you can only pray is the general direction of your home while you're absolutely twatted. You've got excellent viewing angles here and it is a perfectly sharp display as well. Certainly are no troubles reading tiny text on this thing, nice and crisp. The Ultra comes with a new programmable quick button as well, that's that bright orange bugger on the side here, just give that a quick tap. And for me, as you can see, it starts up a bit of boxing exercise action. I can then tap it again at any time to pause the workout and also to resume. 
And if I long press it, and that will finish the workout for me. It's quite handy if you get particularly sweaty during your exercise sessions. Don't get the touch screen all disgusting and smeary, etc. But this action button, fully customizable, you can bind it to any tracking exercise that you like. You could also set it to load up the stopwatch, the torch, do the old water lock action. And the Galaxy Watch Ultra is pretty good for your emergency type situations as well. Press and hold that action button for five seconds, it kickstarts the siren feature. Oh, f and there's also a fall detection feature which has to be switched on. Another handy one for those late night stumbles from the pub. And then you've got the usual home and back buttons as well. And if you long press the home button, you conjure up a great mid Bigsby, in case you ever want to do that for some reason. I didn't understand that. Swear to God, I haven't ever heard us hear anything other than that. But my major bugbear with this watch is that despite its size and its cost, there's no twisty bezel -y thing to navigate these menus. You've just got to swipe or else run your finger around the rim of the screen to quickly skim through stuff, which makes it particularly smeary if you're sweating a lot. Like even that action button looks like it should be some sort of rotating crown type situation, but nope, bugger all. Yeah, no real surprises on the UI front. You swipe this way to access all of your notifications. You can fully respond to emails and messages. Swipe this way for all your various widgets, which are completely customizable. Swipe down in order to access your quick toggles. Again, fully customizable. So you can swap these about, add some in, take some out. And last up, if you swipe up, you access all of your apps. And there's the usual variety slapped on here to begin with. Fitness tracking shenanigans, timers, stopwatches, you can check out your photos, you can take a photo, you can make a recording, and of course you can add in extra apps on top as well thanks to the Play Store access. So as you can see here, I've got the Audible app, I've got the Spotify app, which can be a wee bit slow to respond and occasionally is a bit janky, got to admit. It can be handy if your hands are full of stuff, you just want to jump straight into a recently played album. I also really like uh, stuff like Calm, for instance, which can help you just to chill the f out when it's been one of those days. Meditation is, in my mind, the most radical thing a human can do. And the WhatsApp app, particularly helpful as well, just for quickly responding to messages using your voice. You can actually use the tiny on-screen keyboard or presets as well. A tiny keyboard does actually work better than I would expect. It's kind of crazy just how good it is, in fact. Now, mic and speaker can also be used to take calls on the fly or, of course, speak to warm aid Bigsby. Again, just, just don't. And you got the usual features like contactless payments on here as well. Now, the brains of the operation here is Samsung's Exynos W1000, Sammy's first 3 nanometer watch processor, which is apparently up to three times faster than the previous generation. And everything runs pretty smoothly on the Watch Ultra almost all of the time. Occasionally it'll have a wee moment when you're swiping the rim to quickly skip through the various widgets. You'll see the odd little stumble here and there. It's not completely smooth, but generally all good. And Samsung has apparently tripled the amount of LEDs that it's stuffed inside of the bioactive sensor versus other Galaxy smartwatches to improve the accuracy of the heart rate monitoring and all of that health stuff. And it certainly all appears to be accurate, capturing spikes and dips during workouts, all that good stuff. And Samsung has chucked a fresh dual band GPS system onto the Watch Ultra, which seems to do the job very nicely indeed. Maintains a strong connection even in fairly built up areas. Haven't exactly tested it in New York with skyscrapers and stuff, but certainly in Milan it was fine with fairly big glass buildings all around. And even when I'm indoors, the connection seems to stay fairly strong. It certainly accurately maps your routes when you're out having a bit of a wander. I haven't tested it for running because I dislike running with an absolute passion. And as usual, absolutely ruddy loads of exercise type situations can be accurately tracked. All of the main stuff you could possibly be into, including of course running, cycling, a bit of swimming, all of your indoorsy gymmy type stuff. The amount of gym based exercise is very impressive indeed, very specific. And if you do like to indulge in the occasional triathlon, why not? Where well, you got the multi sport feature. Again, fully customizable to suit whatever your chosen exercises might be. And Samsung's auto detect exercise feature works remarkably well. It kicks in as soon as it detects that you're doing a bit of walking, presumably running too, and tracks the whole thing for you. Uh, even detected when I, for some reason, decided to get on a roan machine and try that out. Recorded all seven sweaty minutes of that disgusting mistake. 
I didn't get a chance to test out a couple of the exercise -y bits here on the Galaxy Watch Ultra, including track back, which should be quite handy if you're hiking or cycling or whatever in a strange place you don't really know. Just allows you to trace your route back to your starting position in case you get absolutely bloody lost. And something else that I didn't get a chance to test because as previously ascertained, I absolutely f***ing abhor running is Samsung's fresh new race mode. And this should intelligently track any routes that it's detected you've previously run and then encourage you to beat your past efforts by giving you a status update on the fly in real time, showing you how good or how bad you're doing compared to those past performances. But yes, as far as running goes, I maybe occasionally run for a bus, certainly for last orders, and that's probably about it. Whereas I'm more of a gentle amble kind of guy. But yeah, if you have a bit of a squint in the Samsung Health app, this records all of your fitness related data so you can check out your energy score which for me generally isn't fantastic just based on how well you slept how much activity you've been doing all that kind of shenanigans and of course you can check out all of your previous workouts in here including heart rate zones any other relevant information here was that roan machine mistake and naturally the galaxy watch ultra does a good bit of sleep tracking I generally don't need to be told if my sleep is crap because I just feel really cranky and awful. There's also snow detection, which is an optional feature. Believe me, you do not want to turn that on. It's the most deeply disturbing feature of any device ever. And just trust me, you do not want to know that you sound just like a hyperventilating alpaca every time you pass out. After a full week of monitoring your kip, you're assigned a sleep animal. I'm a lion, as you can see there. And then the Samsung Health app can offer up tips on getting better sleep, etc. We're not talking anything particularly earth shattering here, just stuff like mm, maybe don't stagger to bed at 4am after smashing back a half dozen espresso martinis and a couple of vodka Red Bulls. All right, mum, fine. As for the battery life, well, it's absolutely fine, but I wouldn't call it particularly ultra. I found that the Galaxy Watch Ultra typically lasted around two and a half days on a full charge with regular use. That includes the occasional bit of app play using the media controls, obviously you have the auto tracking turned on, always on display activated. It's doing like maybe one 20 minute exercise every day. So it will last you a full weekend if you go away for it, but if you're away for a long weekend, then basically you're f***ed. Oh, you know, you can take the dock away with you, which to be fair is pretty compact. Thankfully, Samsung's slapped a pretty good power saving mode on here, which is fully customizable and also pretty transparent at exactly what it does. You can actually keep certain features switched on with the power saving mode active, including the auto detection for workouts, the heart rate monitoring, etc, etc. There's also a watch only mode, which does exactly what you'd expect it to. It gives you weeks of life if you do just want to know what the time is at any given moment. And when it comes to recharging, well, like all Samsung devices, not exactly the nippiest. When I slap this thing on its docker, I find it takes roughly two hours to fully charge up again if it is completely drained. It's got exactly just slap it on there for 10 minutes and get a full day's use like you can with certain other watches from the likes of OnePlus. Speaking of which, the OnePlus 2 and presumably the new 2R as well gets longer battery life than this bad boy despite being about half the size of it. However, if what you want is an ultra rugged smartwatch with lots of clever pants exercise type fitnessy features, well, definitely job done on that front. It's generally pretty easy to use and quite nippy as well. It's just a shame there's no rotating bezel or any other way of interacting with that UI rather than just swiping the bloody touch screen. Anyway, that's what this bull northern twonk reckons. But what do you guys think about the fresh new Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra? Are you tempted? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.